So I'm going to be sharing the way I rate limit resolvers in GraphQL. Now for this, I'm using type GraphQL, um, but this method pretty much works with any implementation of GraphQL that you're using. All you really need to have access to is the context uh, and the info object. Um, and so I have it where it basically wraps the resolver and gets called before the resolver gets called. So here is the rate limit function that I'm using. Basically how it works is I pass in a number of how much I want the resolver to be called per day. Um, and again, I'm choosing to pick this as a, my time limit or time frame being a day. So you can do 50 requests in a day or 100 requests in a day. I could also choose to do this in a different time frame. Um, but that's what I have here. Uh, and then what I'm doing is to decide what the key is for who the user is, is this is this is how I'm computing it. So I'm using, uh, here I just have a constant rate limit at the front, and then I'm passing in the field name. And the info.field name is basically the name of the mutation, name of the query that's going on uh, on the GraphQL side. And the last part is the IP of the person. Um, and so the IP is what I'm using, this particular rate limit function, I'm using when the users are not logged in. Um, but if you wanted to, you could use the session.userID. Um, if you wanted to rate limit, for example, users that are currently logged in or whatever ID you have on that user. Um, but for this, I'm using the IP. And this is something that uh, Express, I have access to with Express on the request. Um, so that is what uh, usually you use if you want to rate limit people that are not logged into your website. So that's what I'm using. Um, and then step one is basically to start counting the number of requests that the user has made. Uh, so to do this, I'm using this key and I say redis.increment. So I'm choosing to keep track of the number of times the user has requested my resolver um, in Redis. But again, you could replace this with other options, but I think Redis is a very good choice. Um, it's fast and it's kind of meant for this sort of thing. Um, so that is how I start off with it is I say redis.increment and it's going to return the current value um, of this key stored in Redis plus one. Um, and then here, uh, so this is going to be one or greater. Here we check whether it has passed our limit. If it has, I'm just throwing an error. Uh, otherwise, I check if the value is one. This means I just basically added the first request of the day for that particular user. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say redis.expire. Um, and what Redis does expire does is we pass in the key and for how long, so one day. Uh, basically that means keep this key in Redis for one day. After that, it's going to disappear or expire. And then after that, just return that next calls the resolver. So that is the gist of the function and um, how it works. Uh, this is how you use it, at least in type GraphQL. So for example, let's say my register I don't want people spamming my register and say you can only use like five a day or something. I say use middleware and I say rate limit and then I'm gonna say five here. So what will happen is it will, whenever a user makes a request, it's going to keep track of that person's IP um, and that we called the register one. And then uh, if you were to do more than five, it will throw an error like this the next time you try to register. Um, and then if you uh, say wait a day, then the key will be expired, the information will be expired, will be gone, and you can make more requests to register. So anyway, this is the algorithm and the function that I'm using for this. But it is good to note that there's actually kind of a flaw in the setup that I have here. So I went with simplicity and not requiring too many Redis requests. So here I have one Redis request and two Redis requests max. Um, and this rarely happens. It only happens the first time the user makes a request. So I did this so I wasn't just doing a ton of Redis requests on every single one. Um, but that means there's a small problem with this. So imagine you increment the key um, and then for whatever reason, expire does not happen. Maybe your connection to Redis times out and when you call redis.expire, it says connection failed. Um, in that case, you never expire that key. Um, so what that means is forever that that user basically is rate limited. So instead of uh, 
they cannot call the register or really anything we call, we add the rate limit on. Um, instead of it expiring after a day, it lasts forever because we never at, p expire the key. Um, so once you hit the limit, you basically can never do it again. Um, but this will only ever happen if for some reason expire doesn't get called. So basically right now, I'm basically willing to risk that. Um, but it's good to note that basically this algorithm is what I got from the Redis increment key docs. Uh, and I'm choosing to do that. But there are some other ways that you can choose to implement this as well to avoid this problem. Specifically, there was one down here um, that I think you can write like a little Luau script, it said. And I've been planning on, I need to actually look up how I actually write this Luau script and get it to run in Redis, say like right here. Um, so I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning on doing that. And until then, this is what I'm currently using. Uh, but that gives you guys an idea of how you may add some uh, resolver middleware to your uh, GraphQL stuff. I want to do one last thing is just mention, let's say you wanted to do different rate limiting, whether the user is logged in or logged out. Um, you could do something like this, where you could basically create the key in two different ways. So here I can say um, limit for um, anonymous users and limit for we'll say regular users so for example let's say we want anonymous users can only make 50 requests a day whereas regular users can only can make 100 use 100 requests a day um, we could do something like this where we say request.session.userid assuming you're using uh, the user id in the session to s decide whether the user is logged in um, so here we can say, oops, const is a non. So if they're anonymous, that means they do not have a session or they do not have a user ID. So here I'm going to say they're anonymous if this is false. And so here, when I'm deciding on what to use for my key, I can do something like this. If they're anonymous, use the IP, otherwise use their ID. And uh, I'm using TypeScript, so a session can possibly be null. So that's why I'm putting exclamation point right there. Um, and then for my if condition, I can say um, if is a non and the current is greater than limit for a non or they are not anonymous and the current is greater than limit for user. And so you could do something like this. So in this case, we are implementing two different limits, whether the user is logged in or logged out, or this is when they're logged out and this is when they're logged in. But anyway, this gives you a general framework of what you can do if you're interested in rate limiting using Redis and GraphQL.